It's Player 4 Podcast. No. Guess what? We're back. No. Oh, no. Yes. Okay, Run, everyone. RTX is over, and the Player 4 Podcast is here to make your day aws- awfulsome. Awfulsome. Okay, Haley's not here because her voice right, is gone from who RTX. Who are we? So, Tristan. Yes, sir. You get to start the introductions. All right. Damn it. Hello, Internet. I am Tristan, a.k.a. Shagwazir on the Rooster Teeth website. I am Alex, a.k.a. Chaos Black 21. I'm Joseph, a.k.a. J. Dunlap, and we have a guest. Guest. Hooray! Woo! Hi, I'm Jenga Ship. Jenga Ship? What or kind Jack of ship is that? Prefer. Oh, Jack Edithil? Yeah, or a means of conveyance that involves uh, blocks that fall apart very easily. <sighs> okay, so Tristan and I have been debating all weekend about the origins of the word Jenga ship. And I've got my theory, and he has his. So would you like what? to proclaim who's right? I wasn't debating. Yeah. I was repeating let's what I was hear, told. Re- let's hear your theories, and then I will say the truth. All right. I like this plan. Joe, you go first. No, you go first. Me go first? No, okay. you hang up. Fine. My stance was I recall this coming up at the uh, Glib Shark panel at RTX this year, RTX 2015, for those of you who don't know. Um, and I remember Jack was saying, you know, he often gets asked why Jenga ship. And I, I, I remember thinking it was really funny because he said that Jenga and the ship part actually came from Jefferson Starship. And I was sitting there thinking that has got to be the oddest, you know, old music reference I've ever heard. And which is why I loved it. Yeah. Old but, references are kind of his thing. Right. Which is why I still think that's <laughs> correct. I always assumed it was a reference to Homestar Runner. Because Hamsar says, yeah, you shank my Jenga ship. They were playing cards or something. They were playing Connect Four. And then Strong Sad says, Jenga ship, we're playing Connect Four. Funny story. You're both kind of right. And uh, Joseph, you're right that the Jenga ship part is a Homestar Runner reference. But oh. my username on the Homestar Runner message boards from way back in the day, like 14 years ago, was Jefferson Jenga ship. As a reference to Jefferson uh, Airplane and then Starship. So the Jefferson Jenga ship part, part came from that piece of it. But then the Jenga ship part came from that joke from Homestar Runner. When I registered for, a site, for an account on Rooster Teeth, Jefferson Jenga ship wouldn't fit. So I just shortened it to Jenga ship, not realizing it would become part and parcel with my online identity for the next, like, 12 years. I thought it was just because there was a ship made of Jenga tiles. <laughs> it would fall apart quite easily, as he explained. That would be a really bad ship. Yeah, it would not be very <laughs> seaworthy. I, oh I'll, I'll admit God. that. I w- dude, if there were a Jenga ship in EVE Online, I'd buy it. <laughs> I've got you talking about EVE now. Awesome. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, maybe I that's my goal. Maybe I'm supposed to be the nautical person who actually makes a, a seaworthy Jenga ship. <laughs> Is it just you stack enough, the water just can't get through? Are I you think gonna I'll actually... have to cheat and use a lot of, like, Thompson's water seal and hope for the best. Yes. Okay, you're going to put a call <laughs> call around it. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, before we get too much farther, we need to jump into our first segment. And another thing. That's right. It's and, and another thing. And a fluffy thing. thing. That is, like, your thing, isn't it? Yep. Okay, I don't have anything this week because pretty much everything led up to RTX. So really, the entire episode is in another thing, unless anybody wanted to correct me on something I did wrong. Everything. Everything? I'll see myself out. No, I thought last week was great. I wouldn't change anything about it. Oh! Let him say it! (laughs) He stole my thunder. Yeah, I thought last week was great, and I wouldn't change a thing, because I didn't uh, didn't listen to it. I thought, well, well, last week was great, well, well, well. Are you going to do that one of these days? One you know, of these days. Wait, did the... you guys do like a dubstep episode? We're going no. to dubstep him <laughs> saying he thought last week was great and he wouldn't change a thing. He says <laughs> it every week. <laughs> they've, they've turned this into a, you know, Ray Narvaez let's play kind of thing where they can't get the podcast started until I say that line. So and then I'm Al- we can't We can't start in another thing without Alex saying, and the fluffy thing. <laughs> so, you know, we've all just kind of embraced it. We embrace the tangent. We can't end an episode without Haley hurting herself, although we just have to go on without her this time. I'm pretty sure there's a rule somewhere that says you cannot do a podcast without going on some kind of tangent at least once in the episode. No, no. See, remember we talked about uh, T-shirts on Lip Shark? It's true. Well, uh, one of our first T-shirts is going to be called Embrace the Tangent, and it's going to be somebody hugging the side of a triangle. <laughs> because we embrace the tangent. 
<laughs> math funny. You made a math joke. We did. Oh. Although yeah. I do like I do like the uh, the shirt that you guys suggested, where you said it's got to be booze plus a headset. That microphone. was actually on Glib Shark. Oh, yeah, that was on Glib Shark. sound equals podcast. <laughs> I think booze plus audio equals podcast. It's going to be go. like a, a bottle <laughs> plus a microphone, just like a typical radio microphone equals in the word podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, we've been working on that T-shirt idea for a long time. I feel like if we sold T-shirts two years ago, we could have paid for a lot of this travel at the very least. Yeah, we're actually in the process of looking for a community artist who's willing to help us make T-shirts ah. because we have so many ideas. There's actually a community artist. Um, you could say they're part of the community that I spoke to this weekend. I won't name who it is, who gave me a very good quote on commissions. Well, there you go. And I will reveal that at a later date after we've spoken again, but... If Does somebody, her name rhyme with noodles? <laughs> what kind of noodles? I'm guessing it does. <laughs> well, just noodles in general. Not spaghetti? Not spaghetti. Because it's actually baguette. Oh. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Who's I can't, spaghetti? I, I don't know. <laughs> I just, stuff up do again. you mean noodles themselves or any kind of pasta? Cause oh, my can, goodness, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say who it is. I'm convinced you, said you, you just Linguini. said Toodles. It's, it's Toodles, Magoodles, Magetti. <laughs> oh, of course. I, me and Toodles go way back. Oh, yeah. Maybe Werben Jaegerman Jensen. Oh, those nights in Parfali. Those nights in Pyongyang. You guys are talking to all my favorite artists. <laughs> is it Ryan with Rotini? I love that Italian artist. Rotini. <laughs> Rotini. But yeah, let's talk about RTX. Yes, please. <laughs> So what happened, RTX? A lot of stuff happened at RTX. First off, there was not coffee in the VIP lounge. <laughs> what? They took a no bar. Coffee. Coffee. Hey, there was a bar. bar. Oh, well, that's fair. That makes sense. I got disappointed in like, okay, well, that seems to be more in line with this company's values. You were working. I was working. <laughs> he was working. Joe, Joe wasn't working. He was working after the, <laughs> the convention. Okay. He, he was I working as was a VIP. I did work <laughs> one day out of the week, and that's when I got the interview with Joshua Arnelis. There so there's that. Boom. And also I was editing the podcast for two days in a row. Boom. So mic drop. double boom. Knowledge drop. That's going to be Actually, yeah, mic drops are the worst thing you can do on a podcast. All that interference. That's <laughs> true. And you might damage an important piece of equipment. This exp- Yeah, it's expensive. I'm wearing gaming headsets, so I could just drop my headset. Well, there I you gotta, go. I got a headset snowball. Headset drop. No. Actually, one say. of our t-shirts is knowledge drop. I'm I'm not made of pop filters, you guys. Wait, wait so, so what is the picture going to be for knowledge drop? Um, is it going to be like books? Just like dropping? like a book dropping a book gangster style. <laughs> How would you drop a book gangster style? I'll have a gangster drop a book. Ah, uh. and I'll observe. <laughs> so Al Capone or like Edward G. Yeah, Robinson. Yeah, that that's what I was thinking. <laughs> See, yeah, yeah, again, old style gangster. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It sounds like Snarf. Snarf. <laughs> but yes. Sword of Omens. So one of, the things, sight beyond sight. so one of the first things that happened this weekend was Glib Shark. Yes, indeed. We were one of the first things that happened this weekend. Uh, a little weird because we're kind of off the beaten track a little bit because we're in the Marriott as opposed to near the convention center. But didn't throw us off our game. And we kept our rotation as one of the easiest panels in the uh, in the whole event to get into, at least the Glib Shark proper panel, we we flexed our muscles a little bit. I was kind of happy that um, you know we got, <laughs> Jonathan gets a text message from from Becca of all people and says I can't get in, and then we had to use our Glib Shark hero panelist powers to let in our dear friend and the voice's sister. My favorite part was when Jonathan donned the cape, flew over to the back door and opened it for her. Said, "Right this way, ma'am." It was the, super podcasting powers. We're still pitching the doorman to uh, to NBC and UPN, hoping to hear back from one of the two. UPN has been pretty quiet, though. <laughs> what about Telemundo? Telemundo. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> I speak more Spanish than Jonathan, so maybe I should work on the Telemundo pitch. <laughs> maybe you should. <laughs> oh, my si. goodness. Es muy bueno. <laughs> <laughs> and Tristan was your awesome tech guardian. Oh, super awesome. I ruined yeah. everything. He was our hero. But, I mean, we, we, we Grace and Nerve Pressure, right? The, the streaming wasn't working for anybody. So it's not yeah. just like just Tristan's room. It's not like Tristan screwed up and like tripped over a wire. And he I'm was sorry. like, whoopsie daisy, and then threw us off the internet. <laughs> He's like, oh, they're not going to stream. 
Actually, yeah, our, all of our, our guardians were super cool, and uh, I'm really happy with everyone I worked with, even you, Tristan. Yay! Even me, uh, even you. <laughs> you know, in spite of your reputation. Well, you know, how, you know how guy compliments work. You have to kick him in the ribs a little bit before you compliment them. No homo. <laughs> exactly. So we have the high five afterwards, just to be just to be clear, and get the three pats on the back. I'm not gay. <laughs> That's what they mean. <laughs> tap tap tap. <laughs> I loved your panel. It was great. I always love your panel. Yeah. Only, only part that sucked was uh, you guys forgot stuff so we did forget stuff and we were gonna have a drinking game with prizes for you and how would think that like of all events that we would be in such a rush or whatever that we wouldn't have booze and the other thing is our condo was stocked with booze if nothing else i could have grabbed some of that sweet tea like a hard sweet tea or whatever and just we could have drank that and then mixed it with whatever it's like yeah we're gonna have a drinking game with prizes it's only there's no drinking game of prizes <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to have prizes we didn't give anything out no, he forgot that too. I Everybody can't. loses. And this is why one of my panels was much more successful than the other. Well, talk about that. What happened? What happened Saturday night? Oh, gosh. So Saturday night was our uh, Dungeons and & Dragons and & Drunk game. And typically, when I ha- my name's attached to a panel, I think, well, I can show up about 20 minutes or a half hour before and be okay. But this time I thought, you know what, let me show up at like – it's already 6.10. I'm like, we should make our way over there in case Oboe needs help with any- anything. And Jonathan's like, do you really think we need it? And I'm like, let's go. And then he's like, all right, fine. So we go, and then on the way over, we get a text from Lauren saying, room is filled up. Get here now. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, 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 little notice to me, the entire room fits like 150, 160 people, and then that's all backed up. It's already been soft capped. So we have the message scrambled to get all of our friends who were in the condo just thinking they'd meander like 10 minutes beforehand and be fine because up until now, that has been okay. That's been the way we've been, <laughs> been operating. And I figured maybe we get like 80 or 90 people max. I figured we get more. I didn't think we get that much more. But. We underestimate our demographic. Dungeons and Dragons and alcohol at RTX, it's like, that is like key. And even against the face of uh, Laser Team and the concert and all this, uh, the geek trivia and all this other stuff going on, we managed to fill our room and we turned away people. And I hated the fact that we turned away people, but I love that there's that much interest in what we're doing. And we drank booze, and we played Dungeons and & Dragons, and Obo was great, and John, and my friend Rocket John was a big loudmouth, but he's playing an oaf, so that's perfect. And Jonathan was just <laughs> Jonathan, and Jules was just demure and cute and just sort of like the Jules we all know and love. And I was a potted plant. <laughs> I was- okay, let's talk about that. You said that, and then the, the, something popped into my head when you mentioned that on Glibshark. Um, did you say, oh, no, not again? <laughs> I should have. I should have. Because it uh, just seems like that's the only thing a, you could say. <laughs> just a potted plant. He was a bull of petunias. Yes. Uh, like a az- bull of azaleas or something. But uh, I had a bow tie. I had a very nicely made bow tie. So Rocket John thought enough to make a bow tie out of hemp rope for me. But then he also tried to roll to pee on me. And luckily he failed. <laughs> <laughs> but it's in character. You know, quote unquote, it's all in character. No, no coloring or referencing from real life whatsoever. Drip, trip, trip. <laughs> but why he decided to go all R-, R. Kelly on me, I couldn't tell you. You'd have to have him on your podcast and ask him. <laughs> we'll just invite him on, ask him that question, and then well, drop the, the call. Four of us to turn into a plant, I knew I could take it the most places. Like, that I could be the one who just sells it with visual reactions and, like, tries and moves around but doesn't. And then when I turn back into a half-elf, I was able to do the whole, like, hulking out thing and rise up out of my chair and uh, I got a pretty good response when I did. Yeah, I heard everyone was in such – like they were just in character the whole time that you actually started photosynthesizing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do feel – I did feel more energetic than I was before. And you made your own good. food. There wasn't a lot of sunlight though, so – Do you, so do you owe I, the Texas Utility Company money now because you produced energy? Well, you, you know, I, I think now is a good as time as any for one of my trademark Jenga ship punts. You could say I got chloroplastered. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you hey, you scores. Without Haley, we need some puns. Earth science on you. You just thought he'd leaf that there. <laughs> oh, God. Just plant the joke in. Gotta, plant the ro- gotta lay the roots first, and then you can bloom. Well, I'm rooting for you. <laughs> but 
But my gosh, like it's been such a huge reaction even before and after that you you, you haven't seen the last of uh, Dungeons and Dragons and and Drunks and us. So I'll leave it there. Maybe they'll give you a bigger room next year because here's what I think happened. Everyone looked at the program and the list of panels and looked at Dungeons and Dragons and Drunks and said, that sounds awesome. Yeah. But they now, stayed because they like you guys. We have some interest. I think they came for the Dungeons and Dragons and they stayed for the particular drunks that they saw. Huh. So I think that we have the right mix of personalities too. It helps that we've – Everyone on the panel has known each other for a long time. Uh, Jules and I go back about, I guess, four or five years. Rocket John and I have known each other for like, almost like seven years. Roadblock, almost the same amount of time, maybe a year longer. And then Obo and I go back almost ten. So, so a lot of history there. And yeah, I, I remember that- Obo was one of your first guests on Late Night Jenga Jam. Oh, yeah. Gosh, her and her friend Linnea, uh, who posted Elnea on the site. So if you ever heard the theme music of Late Night Jenga Jam, that's actually composed by Linnea. So Linnea and, and Obo know each other from uh, – because f- they have the same birthday and because they're big Farscape fans and because they kind of came into Rooster Teeth around the same time. And I met them at RVBTO uh, 2005 before I started doing the show proper. And oh no, it was 2006. I'm sorry, it was 2006. And then a few months later, I started trying to do the show, and the show was just me talking to my friends. It was like I'm like inspired by Ricky Gervais' podcast with a little bit of fresh air thrown in there. Like a lot of time, I I think if you play a drinking game, if you you should take a drink every time in the first ten episodes, you hear me ask, "Was that a conscious choice?" <laughs> Those choices are. How but quickly I that, will I be drunk if I do that? <laughs> Concerning you don't drink, yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean you'll you'll, you'll you'll be gone pretty quickly. You have to take shots but, of soda. Uh, but yeah, actually, so we did a scavenger hunt, uh, the three of us, and then Invisible Pen, Misty, and my friend Charlie, and her, her daughter Lou. I haven't seen Charlie and Lou on the site in a long time, but everyone else I c- kind of interact with on a fairly regular basis now. Well, Obo, obviously, every week. Linnea, every time I go and travel. Misty, through Facebook, mostly. But uh, but they've been pretty much constant parts of my life since that, since. Since then, I can talk about how playing with my beard, how hard it is not to play with my beard now. That's grown out a little bit. <laughs> Actually, Joseph, you're the perfect person to ask about this. Um, Do you need that your new beard book that I, Bernie I, was using? I, I might, actually. You couldn't connect to the Wi-Fi network? I, <laughs> I've been uh, – so I've, I've just been lazy. I haven't shaved in a while. Uh, I didn't shave through most of RTX. didn't shave because I was so busy unpacking and moving to my new place. And uh, one thing led to another. Now I have a beard. Like a beard so what were you beard. going to ask me? I was going to ask you, how do you keep from playing with it? Or you just lean into the plank <laughs> and it worked out of your system? Until I you... played with it all the time and now yeah. it's gone and I miss it, but yeah, it had to go. And then I tried to play with it. And yeah, you I had couldn't. phantom beard syndrome. Very disappointed. <laughs> Noobs attempted to have beard intercourse with me. Whoa. Like he rubbed his beard against mine and he said, don't make it weird. Although it it did feel weird at first. Actually, it's, I've known noobs a long time. So briefly, before we continue with the RTX talk, and I mean like just very briefly, um, since this is the first time you've been on, the last time we saw you before this RTX was last RTX, and you had something happen very important to you within the past few months that you invited all those close friends you were talking about to called event redacted. Yes. Yes. Invent redacted. That's sort of the code we came up with for, uh, for my wedding. And one of the reasons I used event redacted was because I have a lot of friends on the site in the community and, uh, we didn't have a lot of space to invite people. So I didn't want to really rub people. I think everyone knew what we were talking about, but I didn't want to rub people's faces in it because, you know, I wanted everyone there. If it was up to me, I would have invited everyone I've ever met on Rooster Teeth and then everyone in my church and everyone in my community. But you being a married man know that you know money does not grow on trees and weddings are expensive. No, I invited like three friends. Right. So, I mean, going, looking back at it, like I probably should have done something similar to that. But then my, my family would, wouldn't talk to me anymore. So – and then there was people I talked to on like, a regular basis I didn't get a chance to invite. But I invited a decent amount of Rooster Teeth people, uh, including Jonathan and Oboe. Well, and, yeah, you've got to invite them. Yeah, yeah they're, they, I talk to them every week. They're family members I don't interact with as often as I do those two. And Jonathan said the same thing that he, I think on Glibstrike, you're talking about the fact that he talks to the two of us more than he talks to most of his friends. 
Well, I guess we are his friends, but I mean, we're, <laughs> we're, in, the upper, we're in the upper echelon of his friends. We, we, we talk, talk all the time, but we're not friends. friends. We're, we're work colleagues. What are you talking about? I've known him from work, but it doesn't pay. Well, how's early married life? Well, everyone asks me that, and uh, the secret to my marriage is that my wife lives 500 miles away. <laughs> so it's been great so far. <laughs> but, so uh, you, just, you don't – so she doesn't grow tired of you. Exactly. So, uh, so I don't know what's going to happen once she moves here, but uh, we'll probably be a lot of fighting, a lot of us getting used to each other. But then also it'll be nice because we'll be able to be in the same room and have a plan how to do something together. We'll just be able to go and do something together. That might actually be a good idea, just plan something when she gets there. Like she's coming at the end of the month, and uh, we're going to a wedding actually, which is great. I heard somewhere that for a young couple like who just got married to go to a wedding is actually really, really good luck for them. I'm not sure why that's the case or if I made this up or not, but uh, but it sounds good, so I'm going with it. Awesome. Let's yeah, jump back to RTX because you had uh, those two things, and then the following day, Monday morning. Monday, Monday, Monday. Was another panel, and that was oh, a so panel featuring myself. That was Sunday, actually. Monday? Yeah, yes, uh, Sunday. Monday we there were, were no panels on Monday. Monday. Don't lie, Joseph. There was Sorry. a delicious panel of brisket, but we'll get to that later. Oh, yes. Man. Okay. Monday morning was the podcast production panel. That... Sunday morning. <laughs> Did I say Monday again? Yes. 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 Sunday morning. Did I mention that I'm just, like, dead tired this week? Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Sunday morning. You. Now, you better not yell that I said Monday, because I said Sunday. <laughs> Sunday no, you're, morning you're, you're good. was the Player 4 Podcast Tops po- Podcast Production, which is not the name we asked for, but it's the name we got. And I wanted to be called Podcast Production 101 because we also had Roadblock from Glib Shark, and then Ken from uh, BitBlender, and then Andres from BitBlender, and also the host of Ain't Say a Much Podcast. And we talked about podcasting and gave our, gave our tips and tricks, and apparently Jenga Ship the podcasting master learned something. I did. So I wish to heaven that someone had done something like that when I was first starting out. Most of where I've gotten to up until Roadblocks win the show was trial and error. It's like fire hot. Like you get burned severely and then you learn not to touch that thing. So you like hear, how a five-year-old learns. You hear yeah, – pretty much. You hear a glass clinking throughout an entire hour and you learn maybe you mute your mic when you're drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and I was never really a super like tech savvy guy, but some of the technical stuff was new to me, and I didn't know that stuff. Jonathan knew it. He, we have a sort of backup system where if he can't do the show for some reason, supposedly I can go and do it. And now that I have an Xbox One, it's much easier. But before, when I had two laptops, it was like trial and error every single time to see will I get sound, will I not get sound, will I stream? Will I? The streaming part's easy, but the the sound piece of it is such a pain in the ass. And I'm so know. glad that I've outsourced all of my work to, to Mexican labor in Oklahoma. <laughs> I got to tell you, I'm a, kind of a dope when it comes to this uh, audio and you know, producing stuff. So I'm happy that Jonathan is on board taking care of all of it. But without him, I must have stopped doing this years ago because it got really, really hard after I couldn't do talk show anymore. Actually, I owe a lot of what I knew starting out to Jonathan. I sent him a message because I had been on Glib Shark three times. Like, this week was my fourth time. Uh, I've been on the th- three times. I'd never made a podcast. I sent a message to Jonathan, and I said, how do you do it? What's your method? And he told me a lot of what I said on the, on the panel. So, thanks, Jonathan. Yeah, thanks, Jonathan. For giving sure. us our start. Said I gave him his start in podcasting, so really, you're thanking me. Grandpa Jenga. Grandpa Jenga! Thanks, Jenga. I can't wait for Grandpa Jenga to be a thing. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Um, well, Pa Jenga has to be first. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. When's that going to happen? Uh, well, my wife has to be in the same town as me first. <laughs> then we'll see. Oh, yeah. Then we'll have little baby Jengas running around. Oh, wait. <laughs> little little, little pun there... machines. I actually um, – I, I end up meeting Barbara and Steven's par- – Dunkelman's parents on, at the airport on the way home. And uh, they explained to me that apparently puns skip a generation in their family. So all of their puns, I don't know if I'm revealing too much about the Dunkelman clan, but uh, the pun person isn't actually their dad. You would think the dad would be the one with all the puns. It's their grandfather on their mother's side. He was the pun machine. All in all, RTX was a tremendous uh, trip, and more than for this uh, professional success, it's like a family reunion, right? You get to see the it people really that you is. talk to every week. It's like um, a not-awkward high school reunion. 
Yeah, the pe- with people except the people you actually want to talk to are there. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. what I mean. Like you, you even see people that you kind of know who they are, but they didn't say hi to you, so you don't say hi to them. But you know who they are, so it's kind of like a high school reunion. Only most of the people there are like your best friends. Are super cool. Like all the I couldn't imagine like doing pool beer with any other group of people. To be honest, <laughs> that yeah, was one of the coolest you, things. You mentioned barbecue. Yes. Oh, Salt Lake, Salt Lake, Salt Lake. So the, Salt Lake. the reason I Monday. stayed an extra day was specifically for barbecue and good times, and I wanted to maximize vacation. Now, in my old age, what I've been doing recently is making sure I take one more day of vacation I need so that I have a day to recover and rest and unwind and get ready for work the next day. This year, I just had to throw that to the window and be like, all right, I just want to go have some barbecue, and then I'll fly back. No problem, right? Yeah, it was awesome mm-hmm. that you were there. So it, much yeah. barbecue. And yeah. so I, I risked it for all the brisket. Let me put it that way. <laughs> nice. Brisket for the brisket. That shirt yeah. you can keep. That's a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, gosh, it's such delicious barbecue. It's such a good cobbler and a chance to say goodbye firmly to most of the people. So my flight, it might, it's this layover in Atlanta, and we're delayed. And I'm told up to a half hour before the flight that you know I'll be able to make my Philadelphia flight. I get there. The flight for Philadelphia has already left. And I'm like, oh, oh. and I talk to them, and they're like, okay, there's another flight, but it's not till the next morning. Uh, you can get a hotel at a discount, but because it's a weather thing, we won't cover it. So I try to find this hotel. I wander out into Atlanta. And keep in mind, it's like super late at this point. Mm-hmm. And I go to three different hotels, and none of these places are it. And it's already two, so I figure, let me head back to the, the airport. At least I can grab some bench. I've done, I've flown to India. I've done it before. I know the drill, right? So I, I grab this hard ass bench and I finally convince my back that it's not dying <laughs> and I pass out. <laughs> and a half hour later, maybe at 45 minutes, I hear this alarm blaring in the terminal. And I don't know if it's a fire alarm or whatever it is. No one's being evacuated. Nobody's there, right? <laughs> Nobody's responding to this thing. I tweet about it and then like a minute, like 30 seconds later, it dies down. But at that point, my, my, my system's fried. It's wired. Like, I, I'm up. It takes me, like, another two hours to even get to the point where I can think about sleeping. And then I get maybe a half hour of shut-eye before my flight. I fly. But you know how flight sleep is. It's, like, worse than not sleeping at all. I land. And then, meanwhile, I, I was supposed to be at work on Tuesday, right? Like, my whole plan was to get home by midnight, get a few hours in, and then go to work. And now that's out the window. Now I've used an extra four days of va- four hours of vacation. I go in there for four hours. I'm a zombie. I'm dead, right? It's like, how's Jack? How's he doing? Oh, he died. He died. <laughs> and uh, I, I end up passing out. I miss four calls from my wife. And I wake up in t- just in time for the show to do that whole uh, night fail that we did. And to do our, our show, and then I pass out after meet pretty much right after our show ended. I went to bed, and I did not get up until a half hour into my shift the next day. Oh. So I'm late for work. So I have to call and you know make up the time and apologize and all that and do my work. And I had to stay late today too to make up for because I missed that much time. I only got to work at nine ten, which is almost two hours after my scheduled shift starts. So I'm caught up now, and I'm caught up on sleep. And my apartment is still not unpacked yet because I put all that off until after RTX. And my living room is full of my family right now because my sister came over and she needed, you know, favor. Family's here. That's what you do, right? Mm-hmm. But I think now we're caught up. Previously on Glib Shark or Player 4 Podcast. <laughs> Previously, One of the two. <laughs> <laughs> Previously on Player Shark or Glib 4. <laughs> sure. Glib 4. That'd be a cool crossover. That would that, that be will, like the third sequel to your movie. That so would be the take, name of our crossover, yeah. Yeah, you two take glib, two, from two shark. Your, two from your podcast and two from our podcast. <laughs> yeah, so um, the, the Salt Lake was a side quest event, and that's run by Grady, Grady Bailey. The, uh, 330033. Yeah, he's now yeah, a four Grady. mod. Grady's uh, awesome. He's now a four mod, and he's the CEO of SideQuest, and he's the head of the technology part of a research institute at University of Texas. So he is always busy. And his <laughs> wife, Julia, was in charge of the Spectres. And um, the two of them are just rock stars. Yeah, Julia is sort of like, uh, I guess the secret power, but not so secret power behind the throne. I think that the motivation for him to be able to do anything is because Julia is so supportive and because she's so proactive. And uh, the two of them... Through SideQuest, raised, I want to say, around 24,000. Really? Yeah. yeah that's, that's just And that's just this weekend. That doesn't count yeah. all of them when they've raised in the past. I would say they've raised about 100,000 for various charities across the years. Uh, don't quote me on that, though. 
That might be a low estimate, actually. May, yeah, that's a good point. Like they've been doing multiple events, but uh, this side quest thing is growing bigger and bigger every year. Like I remember when they first started doing these in RTX, and how they did the whole charity auction in the third floor of Buffalo Billiards, and now they, there's no way that would fit there now. Well, I don't remember. Yeah. Like it's crazy how tickets last year for the side quest stuff. It took a while for them to get sold out. This year, everyone just jumped on it. I need to get up my shit together when it comes to getting this 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 trip ready. Like side quest is going to be one of the first things that goes now, and I don't want to miss a minute of it. Yeah, what happened was they had a newsletter that Grady did. Grady talk about that on our podcast before it happened. I think he did. Um, he uh, talked about a lot of stuff on our podcast. Are you talking oh, about the first, the first we got one. we got the exclusives. Yeah, how the newsletter like yeah the newsletter thing. To, and he said yeah, the, it's going to come out next week or whatever. Yeah, and if you subscribe to it before it came to you. Then it would let you get the pre-order the tickets essentially. Yeah, and so um, they sold. They almost sold out through the pre-orders of the newsletter, but then it didn't didn't take but like a week for the weekend passes to just sell out completely, and then people had to buy the individual tickets. So everyone needs to make sure they're part of that newsletter because otherwise, no one's going to get into side quest that's not part of that newsletter next year. Not at the yes. rate it's growing. Whoa. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's getting hot. I remember like just meeting Dom as like a kid, like at RVBTO almost ten years ago, and now him and Grady are sort of sitting on top of this sort of charity empire. I loved my experience at SideQuest last year so much because I wasn't even going to go, and then I just ended up going, and I had to a volunteer to be a specter this year yeah, because it, I wanted to be part of what was going on with these charities and things. It really changes your experience of RTX, I think, because you're instead of being in this big, like you know, massive convention, you're kind of in a much more intimate setting, filled with people that are doubly dedicated to the community. I'm not saying that people outside aren't, but these are people who came to the charity. You have friends who, many of whom, have been involved in the community for a very long time. So you get a lot of interesting stories, and you get a chance to glimpse people that you otherwise wouldn't see. So, for instance, if you wanted to go see somebody from staff. Side quest is probably like charity auction is probably one of the easiest ways to do that. Okay, so how how many cast and crew members of Rooster Teeth were there? There was um, let's see, Matt Holum was there, Axial Matt was there, Jeremy was there, Aaron, Miles, Carrie, Barbara, Barbara was there, Kathleen was there, Anna Holum was there, Jeff Williams, um, Nico, oh, it's like Ryan, Kathleen right? was there. Yeah, right. so there were a lot. Caleb was there. Yeah. Caleb was yeah. there, Jordan was there. Man, so many people. I hope I didn't forget anyone. But that's the thing also is the charity auction is the people that are going to the charity auction aren't the ones that totally, completely lose their mind because their staff there and overwhelm them. You could almost say that SideQuest is truly the core of the community. Those who want to contribute to the community not just at the convention where they can hope to get an autograph but actually come to this event and give money to charity and hang out and mingle helping the community and helping charity and you all the faces you see there are all the faces that you most commonly see on the website yeah it's also i, I think of side quest as a great time like because the guardians they're all working their own stuff they don't even really get to see each other and SideQuest is a way for the Guardians who've been busy during the day to get together and hang out themselves as well. Very good point. A lot that's, of Guardians that's where I saw there. most everybody. And then as a Spectre, um, depending on your job, determined what it was going to be like for you. I was on Team Glass. So basically, I was supposed to mingle and take pictures and just kind of balance the two. Never got to stay in one place at any point in time. But it also gave me purpose socially because I'm not a big party person. But when I have this purpose socially that I've got to work the room for my job, then I get to work the room and and meet all these people and talk to people and be friendly and then be like, and I got to go. And so, so he only, he only wants to meet people when he's forced to by his job. I, I have limited social energy. Being okay. a specter was awesome. That's my endorsement. <laughs> a plus would do again. Anything else about RTX before we wrap up? Um, just, I would say, like a lot of community events, the first time a person may go, if they're new to it, they'll probably go for the for the staff or for the stuff going on or for the games. But the second time you go, it'll be to see the people that you met the first year. Jenga, since you are the guest, you have the honor of playing us out. 
Oh, nice. So when I play you out, what do I do? Do I sing a song? Maybe. Just Whatever song? you want to do, but typically people talk. They don't sing, and they and they say goodbye to the audience in whatever their way is. Uh-oh. Okay. You can win it if, if you spin, spin, spin it. Ha, ha. If you spin it, dump, bump, bump. Tail spin. <laughs> Duck tails. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I saw it coming. Sailor Tweak, I love you. You're so great. Will you sign my autograph?